Hi everyone, this is Alex Trevino, a 3D artist from Mexico. Today I'm going to show you how to turn a 2D concept into a 2D image. You may think it's a complicated process, but trust me, it is easier than you think. As a self-thought artist, I work on all sorts of projects using Blender and Substance Painter, and I'm excited to share my tips and tricks with you. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. The concept I will work on is the Lunar Rover vehicle by the amazing artist Matthias Adelson. If you haven't checked out his work yet, you're in for a treat. I love his art because it's so out of the box, there is always something unexpected and comical about it, and the Lunar Rover vehicle is no exception, so let's dive in. For this project I will use Pure Ref to gather all the images I need to create the Lunar Rover vehicle. If you're unfamiliar with Pure Ref, it is a program to collect and organize all sorts of images in one place. And trust me, having a good reference is essential when creating a 3D model. So I will be really specific with what I'm looking for, things like rubber accessories, wheels, and blueprints. The key is staying organized. With Pure Ref, I can zoom in in different parts of an image, make notes, compare multiple references side by side, so it's a powerful tool that has saved me time and headaches. Now it's time to set up the camera, and for that I will be using the program called FSpy. It is a handy tool that helps me find the best camera angle and position for the 3D model. And the best part, it is free. To use it in Blender, you only need to download and install the official FSpy Importer add-on. It's a free and easy way to import the camera data from FSpy to Blender. Creating a 3D model based on a 2D concept requires a keen eye for detail and a solid understanding of the main shapes involved. This involves analyzing the concept art and using the Photoshop to divide the main shapes with different colors. Once I had the clear idea of the main shapes, I save the image and load it into Blender. When blocking out 3D objects in Blender, I start with simple shapes like a plane, cube, or a cylinder with eight sides. Then I use shortcuts like extrude, insert, edge loops, and subdivision to create these objects. This phase is about getting the basic shapes right, so I keep things simple and focus on the essentials. Don't waste time searching for the tool you need in Blender. Instead, Customize the quick menu to include your most used tools and have them all at your fingertips with a single stroke. Right click on your mouse to add a new tool and hit Q to bring up the menu. It's a real time saver. To begin, let's tackle the blocking stage. It is important to focus on the basic shapes first, not the details. Keep an eye on the main shapes, proportions and silhouettes. Do not stress too much if something looks off you can always tweak it later. Now that the blocking stage is completed, it is important to take a moment to understand essential topics such as edge control, origin points, and folders. These elements may seem small, but play an essential role in the next modeling stage. Edge control is a crucial aspect that you need to master. This means understanding how the edges of your object affect its overall shape and appearance. To control the angle of a corner, you need to have three edges. The closer the edges are to each other, the sharper the angle. If the edges are farther apart, the angle will be smoother. By mastering this concept, you can create complex shapes with ease and precision. Origin points are also important because they define where the object transformation occurs, such as scaling, rotating, or positioning. If you set your origin point correctly, you can avoid ending up with unwanted transformations or even with yourselves. When working on a 3D model project, it is easy to get lost in the details and lose track of the big picture. That's where folders come in, by organizing your project into logical groups. You can keep tracks of all your objects and quickly find what you need. Plus, you can focus on what is important by hiding unused objects. If you want to keep your 3D models looking sharp, the Loop Tools add-on in Blender is a must-have. It helps you create small circular loops or fix rough areas and more. Before you get started, enable the Loop Tools add-on in Blender's preferences. Once you have it installed, you will be able to create beautiful clean topology with just a few clicks. The F2 add-on, also known as the Spider Script, it is an essential tool for Blender users who want to speed up the workflow. 
This add-on extends Blender native functionality of creating faces, enabling you to create faces from a single vertex or an edge selection. Let's be honest, a high quality GPU like a 3080 Ti is a game changer for a 3D artist. Not only can you use a viewport rendering without any issues, but also see a significant improvement in your render times. Who doesn't want to spend less time waiting and more time refining their artwork? So, if you're serious about 3D art, it is completely worth it. Now, it's time to start detailing each area of the lunar rover. I will focus on the more complex forms, omit the basic ones and provide an overview of the tools and modifiers used. This way, you can get a better understanding of the process. When working on the wheels, I start by adjusting the scale of the tire area. Then, to create the rims, I use inset, edge loops, and extrude. The spokes are made using an array and a circular curve. And for the outer tire lines, I change the origin point to the center and manually copy them one by one. I prefer curved path when making the seat frame because it is the easiest way to create the shape I want. It gives me more control over the curves and help me achieve the exact curvature I want. I also add a subdivision modifier for the frame to make it smoother. This helps eliminate sharp edges or jagged lines, giving the seat a more polished finish. When creating straps, extruding planes is the easiest and most efficient way. Once I have the base shape, I add the solidify modifier to give it some depth and then use the subdivision modifier to make it smoother. Finally, I use the array modifier to replicate the straps along the object length. This method allows me to create multiple straps with the same properties quickly. To create the engine, I started with a simple plane and added edge loops to create an overall shape. I use the base of an eight-sided cylinder to create the holes. All through, in hindsight, it would have been much simpler to use the loop tool circle. Once the basic shape was complete, I extruded to give it some depth and then used an array to create multiple copies. In the concept, you cannot see the other side of the vehicle and I was not willing to leave it symmetrical. I added several objects, one of them being the console, I took real references from Lunar Rovers and made a reduced version. The most important aspect of this object was the topology. I started with a plane, added eight-sided cylindrical bases to create the circular holes, and finally put everything together. Using mainly edge loops, extrude, and create faces with the F2 add-on. When creating the lights, I relied heavily on the subdivision and solidify modifiers. But the crucial one was the mirror modifier, which helped me get the perfect symmetry. Just remember to place the origin point in the right spot or use an empty. And for the round holes, I used the loop tools add-on to get the job done. My approach to making the arm involved creating simple objects with good topology. First, I begin with a stretch plane and create a circular holes in each corner with loop tools. Then I add a solidify and subdivision modifiers to improve the object's details. Finally, rinse and repeat the process several times to complete the arm. Creating cables, it is an operator. I only use a curved path as base and add some thickness. When I extrude a new point, I ensure the distance between each point it is the same. And if it looks too rough, I just smooth it out. To conclude, I apply a subdivision modifier. With this, we have completed the modeling of the lunar rover. Using FSpy for the camera setup, Pure Ref for the reference images, and Blender for the actual modeling work. Use edge control techniques, origin points, and folders to improve your workflow. And remember, install add-ons such as F2 and Loop Tools. In the next video, I will present the process of modeling and sculpting the character. Also, join the community and showcase your talent by sharing your creations with the hashtag StudioShare. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more content like this, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And see you in the next video.